Hey, what's going on guys? Jake Verdon Tech here, back with another video. And as you can see, we're going about this one a little bit different, kind of going at the beginning of this video, more vlog style. But that's because we have a little bit of a different project. We're actually going to be redoing the network rack that I have installed in my desk setup. So we're going to be changing some stuff up on it, kind of cleaning it up a bit. So I'm going to take you guys along for the ride on that. And we're kind of doing this vlog style too, so I can just kind of point out the things that we're going to be changing. Alrighty guys, so taking a look at my network setup for my desk setup and my YouTube office space. As you can see right now, we are. this is my desk setup that you guys are pretty used to seeing. So down under the desk right here, this is the network rack that I have for this setup. And as you can see, I don't have a whole lot of equipment installed in it, and actually a even less is in use but some of it's kind of storage too but as you can see it's kind of a mess when it comes to the wires and stuff so I really want to clean this up in this video kind of show you guys how I'm gonna go about that so the plan is we're gonna clean it up a bit I'm probably gonna eliminate this 8 port switch and just use this 24 port PoE switch if I can kind of refurbish it the way I want to make it a little bit quieter clean it up a bit so we'll remove this switch use the Cisco 24 port it's actually this is actually a really good switch even though it's a little bit older it was pulled it out of a job site at one point when I was installing new network equipment on that job site so hopefully if I refurbish this with uh, some new fans just kind of clean it up make sure it's nice and quiet that was really the only reason why I haven't used that switch so much is uh just because of how noisy it is. We do have a rack mounted surge protector which is really nice. It's got a lot of outlets and it might be kind of hard to see this stuff but yeah as you can see it's just kind of a mess with ethernet wires, power cables so the goal is just to kind of clean it up. So we're going to remove the 8 port switch. We're going to try and use the 24 port PoE switch even though it's kind of overkill for this particular setup. I am going to be installing a patch panel up top where we'll have our ethernet runs and drops go into and we'll have nice little patch cables going to our 24 port and that's pretty much it. I might move some of this stuff to another spot so we're not using it so much as storage but and as you can see too I got quite a bit of cat5 back here that is a little bit excessive. I don't have like, I didn't have a box of Cat5 at the time or, and I just needed a bit longer cable to get to my PC. So we're going to be cleaning all of that up. It's probably not going to happen in today as I am going to be getting some box of Cat6 tomorrow it should be here. So, but yeah, that's kind of going to be the project for the weekend and this is what I'm going to take you guys along for the ride for, but It'll be kind of cool. I like doing these jobs. I Luckily, I get to do them at work a little bit here and there where we install, you know, new network racks, server racks in certain buildings and locations. So, uh, unfortunately, I haven't taken the time to do a good job on my own personal one. So, that's what we're going to be doing today. Alrighty, guys. So, first things first, I have all the footage that I did for this project. And I'm just going to kind of walk you guys through what we did and the changes we made to get to the final product of my newly reorganized network rack for my desk setup. There was a large portion of this project where I had my desk setup also kind of disassembled. I didn't show a whole lot of that, but I did do some cable management when it comes to that as well. But kicking things off, the first thing I did was start to disassemble the network rack and just kind of get a general idea of how I want to lay things out and what components sit on the rack in which places. So the first thing I did was remove the Cisco switch that we are going to be refurbishing and working on a little bit. And while things were getting disassembled, I did do a little bit of dusting as well, just because these electronics get really dusty. So now's the ideal time to clean it up a little bit. Move the 8 port Unify switch down, and then I installed the 24 port patch panel right at the top of the server rack. Thank you. 
since this project was going to be a couple days long, I did end up just remounting the Unify switch and running my existing patch cables through the patch panel and directly into the switch. This is just kind of a setup in the meantime, so I still have network connection going to all of my devices. So next I did turn my attention towards the Cisco switch, the 24 port PoE switch that we were going to be using. I did manage to disassemble it, clean it up a bit, and get those fans swapped out. But after all of that and remounting it and connecting some devices to it, the speeds just were about a third of what I was getting out of the Unify switch. I think the Cisco switch just might be on its last legs so we are going to revert and use the 8 port Unify switch just so I can get better speeds for all of my devices. It was kind of a long shot and I'm sure many of you are kind of scratching your heads on why would I use that larger Cisco switch that has the potential to be kind of clapped out versus the Unify switch. I think it just fills it out a little bit more aesthetically and I have been wanting to mess with some Cisco hardware a little bit, but we are changing it up and using the eight port Unify switch. So the next day I did manage to get my box of Cat6 ethernet cable in and it was time to make all the runs from each of my devices. Even though this isn't a whole house network rack that I'm working on, it's just for this particular room. I do have quite a few devices that I want to hardwire being my PC, my NAS, and any of my gaming consoles that can be hardwired Ethernet, whether it's my Nintendo Switch or my Xbox Series S. When devices have the option to be hardwired, I usually try and do so. And I do have to run a line for my Unify AP. So essentially, I was just kind of running all of the lines, not really through walls or anything, but just behind my desk setup and entertainment center to get to the devices that I wanted to hardwire. And as far as my technique for running these lines, I basically just had the box of CAD6 in front of the network rack. Then I just run the lines one by one to each device and I make sure I have plenty of excess to start out with. This part is a bit time consuming because there was a lot of other cables I was trying to organize as I was doing this, like the power cables and many cables I had behind the entertainment center and trying to fit in these CAT6 cable runs is a little bit time consuming. So here I was making a run, three runs behind the entertainment center, one for my Xbox Series S, one for the Nintendo Switch, and one for my Unify AP, which is my Wi-Fi access point, which also lives behind the entertainment center. So I had three cable drops that were coming from behind the entertainment center, which was a very short distance, like many other of these cable runs that we're making, but we're just making it look a whole lot nicer. I also did make a couple runs going behind my desk setup, one to my PC and then the other one to my NAS storage solution. Once the runs were made to all of my devices, it was time to terminate them into the patch panel. And for this, I'm just using some Keystone Jacks from Everest Media. And I do have the Keystone Crimper, which has made things quite a bit easier. For this, I end up cutting all of the lines evenly and then when I'm ready to terminate them into the patch panel, I basically just take the amount that I want, cut it right at the face of the patch panel, and then pull the wire from behind the back and terminate the keystone jack to the wire and then plug it back into the patch panel. And I would repeat the process for each of my cable runs from each of my devices. To give you guys a little bit of insight on Ethernet and if you are very experienced with working with Cat5 or Cat6 or any type of Ethernet line, as far as crimping the connectors, the mail connectors or the keystone jacks, I basically, it's pretty standard to go off the T568B diagram for the twisted pair. So for the connectors, the regular RJ45 connectors, so basically crossing over between striped and solid and just kind of a variation of the colors. I'll have a diagram on the screen so you guys can check that out as well. The keystone jacks can differ from 
different jacks, but usually they'll always be labeled on the side. And you just go off of the B diagram if you're running T568B, which like I said is pretty standard. I'd never had the wire T568A. And this was the first time that I used the Everest Media Keystone Jack Crimp Tool, which is an all-in-one crimper for the Keystone Jacks. Instead of punching each individual wire from the twisted pair, you can actually just line them all up and crimp it in one shot, which saves a lot of time and makes it a whole lot easier. For the Keystone Jacks, I did also kind of do a bit of a color code for the landline coming in or the line coming from the router. I did use a white Keystone Jack and for the Wi-Fi access point, I used a blue Keystone Jack to further exemplify these two just so at a glance I know which line's going to which device when it comes to my connectivity and for standard client devices like my desktop, my server, and my other gaming consoles that are hardwired. I just used a black keystone jack for those. Lastly, I just did some cable management, ran some zip ties, and had a nice neat bundle going into the back of the network rack. And I made some custom length ethernet jumpers going from the patch panel to the Unify switch. All in all, I am super happy with how this network setup turned out. It's very pleasing from an aesthetic standpoint, and also, all of these devices being hardwired does ensure us a better connection. And this rack definitely does seem like overkill being that we're just housing some runs from different devices in the same room and just going to an eight port switch. I don't really look at it that way though. Having this size network rack in this space has, it fits in perfect and I kind of use it as like a desk end table per se. And also too, it just leaves us with a whole lot of room for expansion if we want to use it in a different location or in the same location and add some other equipment like routers, firewalls, larger switches, whatever we want to add, we do have the room for. It can be very time consuming making the different drops from each device. But like I said, the, the compromise of just having a nice clean cable managed network setup and the better connection that you have to all your devices being you know a hardwired LAN connection I think it is definitely well worth the time spent and the work to do this so that is going to wrap up this video guys thank you for checking this one out hopefully you enjoyed it found it kind of helpful if you've been wanting to work on your particular network setup in your house or a particular room or your desk setup hopefully this gave you a little bit of guidance and maybe some inspiration on building out your network setup I actually really enjoy doing this kind of stuff. It's pretty satisfying just seeing the finished results, especially when you have really clean cable runs. So if you guys wanna see more videos with network related stuff like this, be sure to let me know in the comments and we might do some more videos like this. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like on it. And if you wanna see more tech related videos like this one, be sure to subscribe. As always guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.